Hello, it's Phil Harvey here at Mobile World Congress Las Vegas. And joining me today is Derek Johnston from Samsung. Hi, Derek. Hey, how are you, Phil? Doing great. Uh, right. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Ryan. And, um, you know, it's uh, one of the interesting things coming out of the show and, and in life in general is that uh, uh, data is plentiful and never ending and, and not that expensive, and spectrum is just the opposite. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I, I guess one of the uh, things operators are wondering is, um, you know, what are some uh, tried and true strategies for spectrum optimization? Because this is precious real estate sure. and they need to make the best possible use of it in order to, uh, you know, s stay in business and also uh, increase revenue. Sure, yeah, as you, you hit the nail right on the head, right, Phil? It's like spectrum is the lifeblood of our industry and, uh, yeah, the, the operators just went through, uh, you know, first round with C-band, and there's been a tremendous amount of money spent in terms of, of securing resources, and and it's still a challenge, right? The, mar the you know, CTI organizations are still calling for more more spectrum. Sure. And as you said, the you know the need really is not only to to make the most use of that of that spectrum because just from capital intensity perspective, right, and, mm -hmm. and you know for shareholder value, but it's all, ultimately at the end of the day, it's delivering on that demand that you had mentioned, and so. There's a few things that um, operators of the industry has done to, to be able to optimally use the spectrum resources. So one is, you know, you can always add more antennas to the, to the, to the radios themselves, um, right. and the, but that has to be carefully managed. So then you can use techniques like beam forming to ensure that you're getting kind of a high quality link. So that's, you know, one methodology. Another methodology is, you know, combining spectrum, uh, blo different various blocks of spectrum through carrier aggregation. So creating, essentially creating a bigger pipe Okay. Uh, you know, another technique. And then lastly, it's managing those radio resources through your RAN itself and through the software. And so that's where, um, that's where we really have been focusing. We've, you know, we've always prided ourselves from Samsung to be, um, to make the most, uh, you know, effective in the industry leading performance in terms of, of our radio resources and our antenna technology. But uh, now we've really focused and pivoted towards uh, virtualized RAN and, and optimizing and making a flexible uh, RAN software and radio resource technology that will help us drive that efficiency in the spectrum. Okay, well that, that, that sounds like an interesting approach. Um, what are some of the things that operators need to sort of think about if they're going to go down that path? Sure, so um, you know, in addition to just uh, you know, the, the antenna technology that I mentioned and carrier aggregation, things like that, they have to obviously think through what their, their spectrum holdings are and the combination thereof. And so you've got spectrum usage techniques from FDD and TDD and those behave differently. But then there's the, the notion of what are my users, what are the applications they're using? So uplink versus downlink. Mm -hmm. um, uplink is becoming more of a, an issue these days. And we yeah. always spoke in the industry about you know, downloads and measuring the network performance and downloads, right? But now it's shifting, right? Consumers yeah. are uploading videos and content, they're doing video conferencing, uh, mobile gaming, the enterprise is doing things like video analytics and robotic systems and all that stuff. It's all heavy, heavy uh, uplink drivers. And so um, those are really, really critical. And so to that end, um, you know, we've, you know, we've been working really hard to, to again, address those, those uplink demands uh, both at a, you know, with our partners on the, the silicone level uh, on the device side, but also on the radio resource side. And those things are, are really critical. Uh, and then you couple that with being able to manage it dynamically with, uh, with virtualized RAN or software, software driven network technology on the radio resource side. And that really will give, you know, we believe give our customers what they really need to, to manage that, that demand and do it in a dynamic fashion. Okay. Um, have you uh, had a chance, you know, because obviously, you know, no company does anything in the mobile network by itself. Have you had a chance to um, test these uh, techniques, these spectrum optimization techniques with partners, and, and wh what did you learn from that experience? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, um, what, you know, if you're looking at, for example, on the carrier aggregation thing, ways we had talked about carrier aggregation as a technique um, mm -hmm. with our partner Qualcomm, which we've, we've um, you know, we've collaborated with them over the years many times. Yeah. Um, we had recently completed the first simultaneous so it was 2x uplink and 4x downlink uh, carrier aggregation on FDD spectrum. So, okay. you know, to put that in, in kind of layman's terms is we took two blocks of on the uplink side of um, FDD spectrum, uh, combined those together for about 35 megahertz of, of bandwidth, mm -hmm. and then we took four blocks of FDD spectrum on the downlink side, uh, which was about 75 
megahertz of bandwidth mm -hmm. and was able to achieve 200 megabits per second on the uplink simultaneously with 1.3 gigabits per second on the downlink. And so to put that in kind of relative terms, again, not an apples to apples comparison. Sure. Um, you know, this was obviously in the lab, but if you take this out to yeah. the field on a commercial network, on a 4G LTE network, if you look really folks like you know, Open Signal that are out there testing, road testing, 20 megahertz on a 4G LTE network gets you about 37 megabits per second mm -hmm. download, you know, download. So we're talking about, again, relative, about a 10x increase in, that, in terms of that spectral efficiency um, with, on the equivalent you know, spectrum bandwidth. So um, that's on the carrier aggregation side. And then if you're looking at antenna technology, uh, MediaTek, uh, another, company, you know, another uh, collaboration that we had, um, we worked with them to, again, this is all on a virtualized RAN setup as well, right. to uh, increase the number of uplink antennas in mobile device. So with a mobile test device from MediaTek, we put three uplink uh, antennas into the mobile test device over, in, uh, over our VRAN setup and did um, uh, two CCs of, of C-band from our massive MIMO unit. We were able to get to almost what the peak theor uh, theoretical throughput of in the uplink side of about 363 megabits per second on the uplink. So wow. again, increasing the antenna technology on the device level to be able to give these users that optimal um, optimal performance on the on the, the applications that they're using today. And so yeah. I think those things will have really meaningful benefits to the operator in terms of leveraging all of their uh, the spectral assets. So yeah, that's what I was going to say is just putting it all together. You know, you've, you've got real world examples of uh, you know partners you've worked with, techniques that are, are are proven to work in the field, and then the result is carriers can look at that spectrum real estate that they have, um, use it a little more wisely, and also continue to satisfy their customers, offer new services and things like that, and not be not be kind of gun shy when they're going out to the market and uh, you know in, in pushing new data plans and new usage, exactly. use cases and that sort of thing. Exactly. All right, yeah. Derek, thanks so much for uh, taking the time with me yeah. today. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.